Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So in this video, I want to actually focus on how do we actually get input from the user. And um, one of the things that we're going to have to do in this actual tutorial compared to the other ones is we're going to avoid actually running the code from within the editor because there is a, a particular settings and things that you have to toggle in order, order for this to work. So I just want to avoid that for this tutorial. So we'll write in the editor, but then we'll actually execute it manually. So let's go ahead and look at how we can do that. So like, how do I get Python to ask somebody for information. And it's actually very easy. We could say my name is a variable equals input. And then here is just a string. We'll say, what is your name? Okay, and now let's go ahead and actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and say print hi plus my name. So after we collect the user's name, we're just gonna print the statement hi plus their name. So let's go to where we store this uh, this code, and you can see it's in here. So we're going to type uh, cmd to open up the command prompt. I'm trying to make this bigger. All right, so inside here, I can just say, remember, I can say Python, and then the name of the, I don't remember the name of the file, to be honest, um, first file. So Python first file it doesn't have to be if you're on Windows it, it's not case sensitive but here it is what is your name so it's asking I'll say Chris and it says hi Chris so that's actually how you you take data from your Python program so my name got assigned the value that we typed into the console and sometimes you see people doing that um, if they need to actually deliver a message to a Python script because a lot of the times you might have dynamic information you could uh, you could have a script maybe that looks for a rock band and the script expects you to pass in a name. Well, how do you pass in the name to your script without writing it, you know, hard coding it into the script? Um, so that's one option that you have is just simply to write a, a program that asks for that information and then executes it. So another way though that you typically see people do this is they say import sys and then from um, if we look at sys, we're going to go ahead and say print sys. Now this is the first time that we've actually looked at an import statement in Python, and this is where things get a little bit confusing. The sys is a library, and we're going to look at this a little bit more, but this is part of the standard library within Python. It does all kinds of stuff. Um, we'd have to, let me look it up real quick and give you guys an example, but it, it does all kinds of stuff. So. Um, here is Python's specific documentation. If you go to Python 3.5, which is what we're using, this tells you all about the sys module. It has all these functions and everything in here. Um, a lot of this stuff is going to be way over your head until you're, you're really familiar with Python. Uh, but this sysargv is something that is very important, and you see that in a lot of programs. Uh, so argv, it actually stands for argument value. And we're going to inspect argv in just a moment here. But let's go ahead and put a breakpoint, and we're going to run our code. And when we hit the breakpoint, we can now inspect the, uh, the, the sys property. Uh, we can also look over here, make this a little bit bigger, and we can open up sys. And then inside of here, we can look for argv. So here's argv. What is this? Oh, it's a list. So you can see argv is a list, and it has how many items? It only has one item. That's why it's the zero index. If there were more than one item in here, then we would have, we would have more values. Now here's the thing, that first value in sysargv is the actual name of the Python file being executed. So it's called first file. So it actually gives you the exact path from where Python executed that file. So that's always going to be your sys.argv0 argument. So you're going to see sysargv a lot because people sometimes need that value of where they are in the file system to you know, take some sort of action or to figure out which module got loaded or uh, there, there's there's several reasons for that but you do see that and it's really just that sysargv is a list and it's grabbing the first argument by zero now why am i telling you all this for a beginner level series the only thing i'm that you need to remember about all of this really is number one that this is this exists um, number two you need to know that we can actually do the same thing. So instead of actually creating uh, and using an input to grab data from the console, 
we can actually look at an argument that gets passed in to our Python function. And we're going to do that by saying, we're going to say in our statement, we're going to say print. This is the argument passed in plus sys.argv. And now we're going to reference the first index. So we know that if we just ran this code from our editor, there is no one index. This would actually throw an error because there's only one value in sysargv, and that's just the name of the file. Now, what if I ran it from the command line, though, and I said Python first file um, test. Now, this is actually not going to work either, but we're going to see why in just a moment. Actually, it did work. My, my bad. Um, sorry. I thought that Python would be the first argument. Never mind. All right, guys. So this, this did work just fine. The first value is the name of the file, which is first file dot, uh, dot py. And the second value is test. So I was easily able to pass test in to this script. So if I needed to say, um, you know, this code equals, so in my previous example, I'll say band name. And I could just assign it the value of sysargv. And then all this code down here says, hey, use the, even though this isn't real, but pretend this is real code. And it says, oh, you know, I'm going to take this band name that got passed in and I'm going to look for this and that and this and that. And it's all based on this argument that got passed in. So that's all I wanted to touch on in this video um, because you will see this kind of stuff a lot in programs. And you're like, oh, what, what the heck is it doing? And it's really just arguments that are being passed in to the script, um, sometimes from the console. Sometimes Python can import other modules and, and have arguments to that as well. Um, but this is, this is something you may run into every now and then. I just feel like I needed to at least dr address it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Please subscribe. Bye. Hey, guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.